If you guys would have asked me 20 years ago, do heat pumps work in the cold? I would say like most of the time they do. However, a lot of the times we had to install heat strips. So if the heat pump wasn't able to keep up, basically this heat strip, was, which was a resistance heating strip, uses lots of energy, uh, creates that heater just like a heat, just like your toaster would. And it would help supplement the heat in the house if the heat pump couldn't keep up. The technology has come a long way in many of these heat pumps. And I'll say, uh, typically the mini split heat pumps can work down to zero degrees Fahrenheit, which is pretty cold. That's usually at 100%. Now some of them, um, and that's for a cold weather heat pump, some of the heat pumps in uh, warmer weather situations work down to 20 degrees. So let's take a look at this video, which got a lot of controversy. Uh, I was kind of surprised in the comments, people saying that heat pumps wouldn't work. And I'm gonna talk about some of their misperceptions and why they're wrong. So let's take a look at this video. This is from Mitsubishi, uh, just a quick clip from the International Builder Show last year. First off, cold climate heat pumps do the job in cold climates. That's what they're designed for. You don't wanna use a standard heat pump in a cold climate. You are going to see those limitations on temperatures, on capacity, on defrost, etc. So we'll just take that one and set it aside. They work, I've got systems operating in Colorado at negative 22 just this past week contractor installer sent me a picture negative 22 in the morning and uh, the house was 69 degrees nice and nice and cozy comfy just sitting at 69 degrees at which was the set point I've got a system at 11,300 feet elevation at snowmass ski area and it's doing primary heat for the ski patrol hut there and it's a test case condition but uh, Aspen ski company came to us and said hey we're thinking about doing this do you think it'll work I think it'll work. Let's try it out. It's been doing a great job, it's, but you have to be conscientious about setting it up for success. So he's making the claim that he's got heat pumps that work down to negative 20 degrees, 22 degrees Fahrenheit. Now, these are special heat pumps. These are specifically designed for cold weather climates. If you use something that's um, in Georgia, if you use something that's typically sold in Georgia, in Massachusetts, it's probably not going to work. It's not designed for that climate zone. But if you use something in Massachusetts that's designed for Massachusetts, it's probably going to work fine or Colorado or wherever you have snow. All right. So let's look at some of the comments here and talk about what their concerns are with the heat pump. So they said heat pumps will absolutely fail in harsh, cold weather. They don't stand a chance, unfortunately. Now let's talk about how they're right and also how they're wrong. So if you're looking at a heat pump that is not designed for cold weather, absolutely you'll fail. If you have a heat pump in Georgia, it will fail if the, you don't have enough insulation in the house or if the, the heat pump is not able to keep up or it's undersized. So the way to ensure that, first of all, any HVAC system that you have is going to work well, you need to make sure you have good insulation, proper air sealing, a tight building envelope. You're not gonna lose as much heat through the building envelope where it's gonna to want to go towards the outside because heat always is going to travel through the surface just going from a hot area to a cold area, it always heat, it always travels in that direction. So if you're able to maintain that heat inside the house through a tight building envelope, good windows, good air sealing, it doesn't have to work as hard. Now, I have had geothermal heat pumps. We installed some of those in Georgia. And one time, uh, unfortunately, it was undersized. And what we had to do is go back and insulate properly. Once we insulated properly, the, the supplemental heat, the heat strip did not kick on. It was able to work properly. So that comment, is right a heat pump will fail in, in in harsh cold weather however again according to mr mitsubishi over here if you use a cold weather heat pump um a mini split and i recommend using a ducted mini split versus a ductless mini split if you use a ducted mini split and you're able to circulate that air through the house it is designed to work down to zero degrees and he said down to 22 degrees or negative 22 degrees Fahrenheit, which is pretty cold. We're never going to see that here in Georgia. You might see that in some of the, the, the northern states or Canada, but you're definitely not going to see that here. So let's also look at this other comment. Um, I live in a gated community with roughly 800 houses. Every time it gets cold, people are complaining that their houses are cold and it, and it goes down to 40 to, to, to 40 and below. So 40 degrees and below is not really that cold. So if the thermostat says the house is 64, I'm trying to raise it four degrees, the heat pump will run for an hour, and the house will be still be at 64. The flip side, it could be 105 outside, I have no problems keeping all my house ice cold. Installers tell, if the installers tell you the same thing, there's a brand new house, it's two by six construction, thicker insulation. My assumption is it wasn't designed correctly, and they probably didn't have the right specs. So 
Uh, just because it has two by six insulation or, or two by six construction doesn't necessarily mean it has a, a good amount of air sealing. So let's talk about some of the things that, that could have happened with this. They either, uh, one, they didn't do a, the proper manual J, manual D. So if it's running that long and you're not able to reach that set temperature fast enough, that means the system could be possibly undersized, not oversized. Um, they may have underestimated the the air sealing and the insulation. So when you're running a manual J, when they're when they're doing these calculations on designing an HVAC system, uh, there's a lot of assumptions that are made. They're not going to know exactly how the house is going to perform, unfortunately, until after the house is made. So you're going to say, hey, this house is kind of leaky, very leaky, not so leaky. So just because you have a lot of insulation uh, doesn't mean the house is built very tight and you can have a lot of heat loss that way. So in this circumstance, I'm going to say that they probably didn't specify the right equipment or they could have undersized uh, the equipment. Even when the, with the heat pumps that I've that we've installed that sometimes had to have the supplemental heat kick on. And again, these are some of the older systems. They were still able to maintain temperature inside the house because we designed them properly. Now, again, the newer systems, you're not going to have this issue. And a lot of them, what they do is they're constantly running. So it's, it's keeping that air circulation inside your house. Uh, filtering the air, and it's also making sure that the temperature is even throughout the whole house. So again, you want to start with the building envelope, make sure you have a good air seal, good insulation, good windows, and then design the HVAC system to match that. You have to know how the house is going to perform before you design that HVAC system. A lot of builders don't really know how their houses are going to perform until after they build them or until somebody comes out with a blower door or duck blaster test and says, hey, you failed, you're this much HCH50. They don't even know what ACH50 is half the time. So if a builder is saying, hey, I'm typically uh, at one ACH50 or less, that's pretty good. You can go back to your HVAC designer and say, hey, this is how we're going to design this house. If they think they're going to have, uh, if they've never tested a house, they say, hey, I could definitely do one or less, and they've never gone through that process. They probably can't get to one unless they have some coaching. So as an HVAC designer, I would make sure that I know what the builder can do um, within the software they tend to over-design because there's so many variables, so many conditions. And even throughout the day, throughout the year, the load changes on the house so much that you have to have an HVAC system that can adapt to the environment. So when you're designing it, you're designing for the coldest day and the warmest day of the year. And unfortunately, most of the time, the system's actually not running at full capacity. That's why you have these variable speed blowers. You have these variable speed refrigerants that help make sure that the house is constantly comfortable and you always have constant fresh air in the house because of circulating the air supplemented with the ERV. So I'll talk about one last point, and this is one of my frustrations, especially with HVAC companies. Uh, again, at one point we were an HVAC company. We had to bring it in-house because we were having so many quality control issues out there. And now there's plenty of HVAC companies in this market that can design and install really well. And uh, I don't have to worry about that anymore. But the challenge that I was having is the HVAC guys, they're just like making up stuff. They're looking at the house like, ah, I think this is going to be this many uh, tons per square feet because that's what they've done in the past. Or they look at the old equipment, say if you're doing a retrofit on a house. And a lot of times if we're doing retrofit, we're enhancing the energy efficiency. We're taking out the old windows, we're putting new windows in, we're putting in new insulation or air sealing the house. Uh, a lot of times, like reducing the air leakage by a factor of three or four, but what they're looking at is the existing HVAC system saying, hey, I can go ahead and replace like for like. Unfortunately, in that case, they're, they're oversizing the HVAC system. It's going to short cycle. It's not going to pull the humidity out properly. And you have to definitely have a supplemental dehumidifier especially in, in areas where we're going to have too much humidity. So the frustration that I have is, one, with these designs, you have to know the target air leakage for the house uh, for these designs instead of just like good, better, best. If you can actually override that good, better, best option in uh, the right soft, the sizing for the HVAC, you can put an exact number. You can get a targeted size for the, for the house but also designing a duct system that, that goes along with it. So there's a lot of rules of thumbs that typically work. However, if you're building a, a super loose house or if you're building a super tight house, a lot of those rules of thumbs go out the window, just like your energy, if you're not designing these, these things properly. So my recommendation is to, especially if you're, gonna, if you're going to do a retrofit on a house, do the test on the house, kind of see where the, the, the problems are. 
with the test, you're going to see like where the issues are in the house and where you're going to be able to fix them. So if you're getting a blower door to say, hey, this house is really leaky, they're going to oversize the system. You're putting an expensive system in that price per ton is pretty high. So what you can do, make the house more energy efficient. You can bring that HVAC cost down. That's going to bring in less duct work, less, less equipment, and your energy bill is going to be a lot less. So two things with that, your upfront cost for the HVAC is going to be less and also your energy bill. So I really wish HVAC guys and contractors work together. Uh, HVAC guys, their job is to sell equipment. A lot of these uh, companies that come in and service equipment, they make their money, their higher margins are taking out the equipment, putting in new equipment. Their, their margins aren't in air sealing. They're not in insulation. It's not in the duct work. Really the things that affect the performance of the house even more. Now, one other point I want to make about this generalization with heat pumps, typically when they say heat pump, they're talking about a standard like carrier train uh, ream heat pump that comes off the shelf. It's like just a standard system. It's not a mini split system. So there's the air to air heat pumps uh, where it's the the, sta the standard heat pump. And that's probably where most of these comments are coming from. You have the mini split systems where, where you've got the variable speed refrigerant, um, a ground source heat pump, where it's also called geothermal, where you're basically taking that energy out of the ground during the winter time, you're taking the heat from the ground and you're dumping the heat out of the house back into the ground in the summertime, kind of creating this battery effect. So there's different types of heat pumps. So to use heat pump as a generalization saying, hey, like all heat pumps are bad. Well, there's different levels of heat pumps. And if you're talking about the entry level builder grade, barely sized and barely designed properly and uh, to, to work in the house, no variable speed refrigerant, not a variable speed blower. Yeah, of course, it's not going to work very well because it's not designed to work well. It's just designed to meet minimum comfort of the house. And that's about it. And again, I'm not being critical of these comments. I really do appreciate these comments. And I want you guys to leave more comments in the comment section below. And we're going to be going through periodically responding to some of these comments, uh, either in the comments. A lot of times we just respond within the comments and what we're going to do is if we think it deserves a video or more of an explanation that we can put in a just a bite-sized tweet then we're going to create a full video or may even write an article on our website so appreciate your time and watching this make sure you subscribe and also sign up for our newsletter so you can get monthly updates on all the new content that we're creating thanks again see you guys next time